Now, I understand that a lot of you probably like John Cena being the United States champion for a multitude of reasons. You believe in the importance of the mid-card titles just like I do. And as a result, you know that that title being around somebody like a John Cena will instantly elevate the importance and significance of that title, which is something you like and something I most certainly like as well. You know that it's going to be elevated because if nothing else, it's going to be featured every single week. And the person holding that title is going to be featured every single week. Something that you like and something that I will like. You like the fact that the belt will actually be defended on pay-per-view. You like the fact there will actually be some type of story involving that title. There are lots of things to potentially like about it. You also like the fact, frankly, that John Cena is not in the main event picture, and that's something that we can all get down with. Now, I think it's one of those good things from time to time to back off of a guy like a Cena just a little bit. You don't have to back off of him all the way, and they most certainly aren't backing off of him all the way. But backing off of him a little bit can be very productive for all parties involved. And it can actually make people, in this particular case, ironically enough, I think like Cena at least a little bit more uh, because of the fact that he's not being crammed and pounded down people's throats quite so much in the same way in the same type of spot. And it is something at least a little fresh and a little different. So I understand why people like it. But I have my concerns about it, and I've stated them before. I'll state them here quickly again. Number one is that with him being the U.S. champion, you know, you're talking about a guy that you know, you've always had in these featured type of stories, but when it comes to the U.S. title, are they always going to be able to have featured stories for him? On top of that, who are going to be the types of opponents that you can really have for him that you can have a real type of story with? And when you look at the fact that they have this open challenge each and every single week, you know, yeah, it's Cena, and it means a little something that he's there and he's defending that belt every single week, but it still kind of falls into that same pattern problems for the WWE that so much of what they do on Raw every week is in-ring based. And while some of you will say, well, what's so bad about that? You're talking about a three-hour show. And when they can just rely on matches alone for most of the three hours of content, it becomes very stagnant, it becomes very stale, it becomes very repetitive, and it stifles WWE's creative process and they get kind of lazy. And I'm afraid that that's what they'll kind of do with John Cena, in part because they have the open challenge to fall back on every week. They'll get kind of lazy. They'll just kind of sit there and have him have his match, and they may or may not have some other type of bigger story involving him or not. And that's a big problem, I think. And you're also talking about a situation here when I go back to the challengers or the lack of challengers. Cena has blown through so much of the roster over the past decade is when you get to the point in time where part of the purpose of having Cena hold that U.S. title is for him to give it to somebody else and help somebody else, who the hell is it really going to be? Who the hell is really going to benefit? Who the hell is anybody really going to take seriously that could even go after John Cena? It's going to get to the point where you kind of have the same type of problem. So what I want to talk about here are some of the different options of people who could, in theory, beat John Cena for the U.S. title. And then ultimately, the person that I think not only could, but should beat John Cena for the U.S. title. And I think he's the one and only guy, frankly, that makes the most sense on so many different levels. I'll break this down into a couple of categories. First, I'll look at the old guard. I guess you could go with a guy like Wade Barrett. You know, if the company decides they want to get serious with him, if the company wants to get behind him, you know, he's a guy that in some ways maybe you could believe that he could give a John Cena a run for his money. But this is also a Wade Barrett that's never won a world title. This is a Wade Barrett that's been around in that company for about five years now. Yeah, that's why I call him the old guard now. He's been there five freaking years. They've always kind of spun their wheels with him. And at the end of the day, would he really get that much benefit from beating a John Cena for the U.S. title? Because it would still be a mid-card title. And furthermore, you know, how many times has Cena disposed of Wade Barrett? And now all of a sudden we're supposed to believe that Wade Barrett can actually beat him? Yeah. You, know, you look at the Miz. Now, The Miz is an interesting option just from the standpoint of he is the guy that beat him at WrestleMania 27, you know, in the main event. So there's that story of what you can go back to. You know, when you're talking about you want to be able to have Cena as a face work with somebody who's clearly a heel, well, you might not have that with Wade Barrett, but you most certainly will have that with The Miz. You know the crowd is going to react to The Miz the right way, the way you need to. That will benefit John Cena, so there's a benefit there. But again, a Miz being a guy that's always needed help in order to win these type of big matches, and including being able to beat John Cena, you know, is he somebody you really take seriously as a threat 
to beat Cena for the U.S. title. You know, I don't know. And again, we're talking about, you know, having a guy like Cena lose to somebody to be beneficial. You know, Miz beating Cena for the belt would help him a little bit, but I don't think it helps the company that much. And I think, again, it's kind of counterproductive. Same thing with Sheamus. You know, another guy based off of his current role, you know, being a heel, he would get a heel reaction. The people want to boo Sheamus. They like to boo Sheamus. They like to hate Sheamus. So they get that opportunity. And Cena, again, his character might benefit a little bit from it. But where would Sheamus's character really benefit from this? You know, he beats Cena so that way he can hold a mid-card title. I mean, these are serious issues with Cena being a mid-card champion. And I don't think I'm overthinking this too much. Maybe a little, but you know me. I tend to be kind of analytical about this type of stuff anyways. But, you know, again, with Sheamus, if you have him win it, then... You know, what was really the whole point of Cena being the freaking guy? And who's to say that Cena would even put over Sheamus clean? Because it's always something. It's always some type of excuse. It's always some type of bullshit when it comes to Cena losing just about anything if he's not facing off against somebody like The Rock or Brock Lesnar. Basically, if he ever loses to anybody else, there's always some hook, some crook, some bullshit, some excuse. Um, there's always some type of defense mechanism put in to try and uh, protect the Cena character. Well, guys like Wade Barrett, Miz, and Sheamus, there's going to be that defense mechanism for all of those guys beating a Cena. And so let's look at the newer generation, some of the future stars potentially of WWE. You look at a guy like Neville, maybe a guy like Cena would be willing to sit there and say, hey, you know what, I could have a really good match with this guy, I could get some rub off of this guy, maybe people will like me a little bit more if I sit there and do the honors to a Neville. Maybe I believe in this guy, maybe I think this guy could be a big star. I'm probably living in fantasy land, and I don't think that's going to happen. Do you really think a John Cena is going to put over a Neville? You know what I mean? Do you really think that's going to happen? You look at a Dean Ambrose, and that's somebody that could work, but it's not like Cena seemed all that willing to put over Ambrose before. He's already beaten Ambrose in the Open Challenge once, and again, this is part of the problem of doing that Open Challenge. Different people that you could potentially build up into a possible threat or contender, you know, Cena's going to already run through. He's already going to beat. And again, when you talk about trying to benefit the Cena character as well as the other person involved, when you're talking about him going up against Ambrose, it's pretty much going to be the same old stuff. You know the crowd is unanimously going to be behind Ambrose, and as a result, they're going to sit there and do the same shit with Cena, and it's just kind of counterproductive in the whole thing. And all the while, you also have those wonders that if a Dean Ambrose did beat a John Cena, would the WWE quickly back off and sabotage him because they might be worried what would happen in terms of Ambrose's merchandise sales compared to Cena's. You always could go maybe somebody like a Seth Rollins, but you know Seth Rollins is a world champion. I don't view as a real threat to John Cena as the U.S. champion. I don't see why a non-world champion Seth Rollins would be a big threat, especially legitimately one-on-one -on -one clean, to beat a guy like John Cena. Now maybe part of the whole shtick with J and J security might make a difference, but again, you know we're talking about Cena. You know, two on one, three on ones are no big thing. Remember when he did it to Miz and Alex Riley? He beat, he won that. That was a two on one straight up match the whole time. You, know, you look at what he did with Bray Wyatt last year. He beat him multiple times in handicap matches, glorified handicap matches. And just, I don't see it. And then you could go to Roman Reigns. And here's my thing. Roman Reigns versus John Cena is a big money match waiting to happen. And it's a big money match that deserves a big time show. Now, some might point to it being a SummerSlam main event type of thing. And I could, I could understand that. Personally, I think that's a match that should be safe for a WrestleMania, whether it's for the title or not. But in this case, would you really want to blow your load with Roman Reigns versus John Cena over the U.S. title? It seems to be you're restricting the potential and possibilities for the importance of a Reigns-Cena match. Furthermore, what would be the point of having Roman Reigns win the U.S. title? You know, and what would they do with him once he was the U.S. champion? So in terms of those new generation guys that are already on the roster, I just don't really see any viable... Um, possibilities. And then let's go to NXT, the other place you could really go. Is he going to put over a Hideo Itami? <laughs> uh, yeah, you already know the answer to that. You could talk about Finn Balor, you know, maybe. Stranger shit has happened, but I just don't see it. I don't know once he got to the main roster if Vince and Kevin Dunn would understand it, would get him. 
and understand what to do with them and how to utilize them. And that's still important. That's far more important than whatever Triple H envisions or views for him down at NXT or does with him down in NXT. And even if Vince has ever said any interesting or good things about Finn Balor, it's a lot different when they're down at NXT and they're not on Raw every week and you're worried about doing Raw and getting a Raw rating. You know, are you really going to put Finn Balor over a John Cena for the U.S. title? I don't know about that. I mean, I suppose they could always do some type of underdog storyline with a guy like Sami Zayn. You know, the dynamics would be there if Cena puts over a Sami Zayn. You know, maybe that gets a little respect for Cena because he did the honors for a guy like Zayn. He gave him that shot. He gave him that opportunity. Like Kurt Angle once gave John Cena the opportunity. Who knows? There's many different ways you could spin it because, again, it's going to be important to benefit the Cena character as part of this as well. But I think Vince and Kevin Dunn are going to look at Sami Zayn as a guy that does flips and kicks. They're going to look at him as kind of limited and kind of a one-trick pony in terms of the type of story that he could tell. And do you really think they're going to put a Sami Zayn over a John Cena? And even if they did, I would think that a Sami Zayn would just go right back to being the same type of U.S. champion that we've had so many times. A guy that isn't featured much, and when he is featured, it's always in a match. And he has a bunch of matches that don't really matter or make no real sense, have no real purpose or story, and end up on the pre-show of pay-per-views. To me... There's only one guy that can, at this particular moment, be viewed as the one to beat Cena for that title. And frankly, I think there's only one guy that should beat John Cena for the U.S. title. And I think that's Kevin Owens. I really, really do. Because when I look at Kevin Owens, here's a guy that's big enough to be viewed as a serious threat to John Cena. Here's a guy who psychologically, from a character standpoint, could be enough to push John Cena to challenge John Cena, to threaten John Cena. The type of physicality and in-ring style that he has and the crazy type of things that he's willing to do, even on a much greater scale, obviously, than Dean Ambrose, makes him a serious, credible threat and challenger to somebody like a John Cena. You know, a guy like Kevin Owens, you bring up Steen to the roster. He's a guy you could do some stuff with. He's a guy that could fill a certain type of role. He's a guy that could take people to the extreme. He's a guy that could do a lot of different things. He's a guy even more so than Ambrose, I think, that could do the best job of all of pushing things just to the edge without going too far over the edge, but sometimes going a little over the edge because that's what's called for and that's what's necessary. And when I look at at a guy like Kevin Owens. I see him and John Cena being a natural match and a good match for a program, for a feud, for a story, culminating in a big money match over that title, whether it be at a Survivor Series, a TLC, a Royal Rumble, or WrestleMania 32. Just when I look at it, you know, you want to bring up Kevin Owens. I, uh, I keep wanting to say Kevin Steen, but you want to bring up Kevin Owens. You're not wanting to waste your time with Kevin Owens. You want to make sure that you're bringing him up and you do something with him because here's a guy, again, similar to a CM Punk, similar to a Daniel Bryan, similar to a Seth Rollins, similar to a Dean Ambrose, is coming in with his own hardcore fan base established. But because of his look, because of his presentation, I think more so than some of those other guys even, will have the ability, especially early on, to connect more with the casual and mainstream fans that the WWE covets and loves so much. I think Kevin Owens will have much more broad appeal, at least initially, than a CM Punk or a Daniel Bryan did or a Seth Rollins did, a Dean Ambrose did, or what have you. I think Kevin Owens is the perfect choice. Frankly, I think Kevin Owens is the only choice because here's a guy that, based off of his style and his ability to cut a damn promo that the WWE can feel confident with booking him in some type of program or feud involving that title, not somebody that they would just have win the title, and then they back right off him. When I look at the other guys at NXT, like a Tommy or Balor or Sami Zayn, those look like guys to me that they would just sit there and put the title on and then be back to the same old business. When it comes to the new generation, you know, Neville, it would be the same thing. You know, even the old guard, guys like Wade Barrett, it would be the same thing. Miz and Sheamus would work to a degree, but again, do you really get the most benefit out of it? I think you get the most benefit for all parties involved if it's Kevin Owens, because Kevin Owens can go heel. Yeah, you'll have those that will obviously cheer for him in that heel type of role, but Kevin Owens will work the type of role that Kevin Owens needs to work for John Cena to work, for everything to work, and for things to really take off. To me, the only option for who can and should beat John Cena for that U.S. title is Kevin Owens. I'm curious to hear what you think. Am I right? Am I wrong? Do you have another name in mind? I just don't really see, frankly, other than Kevin Owens, where there are any other appealing or intriguing 
or viable options to take this belt off of Cena. That's just my opinion. 